Good girl. Good girl. Hello, and welcome back to the Tom Rosa and Clover Mountain Dairy. Today, we thought we would talk about organic cow health care. Way back in 2012 is when we really had our first exposure to organic dairy. We were stationed in Astoria, Oregon, and we met some dairy farmers nearby who were organic, and well, they still are organic, and they shipped to Organic Valley. And uh, we really, we learned so much from them, and we really liked uh, how they did things, and how they had a focus on cow care, and that really kind of set the wheels in motion for us becoming an organic dairy. A common misconception for organic animal care is that you cannot use antibiotics. And that is not true. Actually, you are required to use antibiotics if it is necessary. In fact, you can lose your organic certification if you deny care to an animal. But, of course, the animal is then no longer organic. So, I just wanted to throw that up. One of the things we learned is that the patient healed itself. So if you have an animal that is ill and you try to support it and give it everything that will make it feel better and boost its immune system, and hopefully it will get better. If it doesn't have an active functioning immune system, even if you give that animal antibiotics, it may still not survive. Also, since most of the items that you're gonna to give to a cow that would be preventative and boost the immune system won't cause any withholding time for milk or uh, meat production, there's no reason not to use them. It just will help boost them, and it's a win-win for everybody. Back when we were working on this organic dairy farm in 2012 is when we first heard about Dr. Paul Detloff. Uh, they had a book uh, written by him called Alternative Treatments for Ruminant Animals, and we found it kind of interesting, so we ended up buying it. And actually, uh, he had another book just recently come out that we bought as well, called Dr. Paul Bedlock's Complete Guide to Raising Animals Organically. And it uh, contains a lot of the information that's in his previous book, and then there's a whole bunch of new information as well. So uh, we really like uh, what Dr. Paul Detloff has to say, and so we use this book a lot. Another veterinarian uh, that's out there that uh, specializes in organic uh, dairy as well is Dr. Hubert Kerman, and this is one of the books we have from him, Treating Dairy Cows Naturally. Uh, he has uh, some really good information in here too, so we reference both of these books quite regularly. So one of the main reasons we decided to make this video today on Tuesday, September 22nd is we had the wonderful opportunity this past Saturday to go to a place in North Idaho and see Dr. Paul Detloff give a seminar and buy some of his products. So some of the things that he had that are very helpful is he has handouts that have basic treatments. So some things would be give this much of this, give this much of that. He has a whole catalog of all different kinds of things. And most of these things are gonna be, um, let's see, like boluses or tinctures. So a tincture is just a solvent of something in an alcohol. So it's very exciting to see uh, Dr. Paul. He was the one who actually gave a talk in 2015 at the Moses Organic Conference in Wisconsin that I attended where he gave a, a presentation on A2 genetics and A2 milk. And that really was the beginning of us going A2. So we talked to him a little bit about that and it was very interesting. All right, so we picked up some things while we were there. One and we didn't have to pay for shipping from Wisconsin that way. Yay! Uh, a foundational thing is garlic bowl tincture. So garlic, I think a lot of people would say boost your immune system. You can use this to help. Even in people. <laughs> help boost the immune system of a cow. It says 3 cc to 5 cc, one to three times a day as needed. It um, can be used, if you mix, any of these tinctures can be used under the tongue, um, a couple inches into the vulva, or uh, mixed into like grain, or in our case, alfalfa pellets. 
So we got that. Uh, we previously had had this, but we got some more. It's C-E-G, and that's cayenne, echinacea, and garlic. He kind of considers this his version of an antibiotic because it is an immune booster and also has antimicrobials in it. So if you have an animal that is fighting something specific, you can give this as kind of like a boost, but it's not something you should be on all the time. We also got this, which is for pain management. It's called Dulit, D-U-L-L-I-T. And it has arnica and uh, a derivative of aspirin. Willow bark. Yeah. Which is where aspirin comes from. So I guess aspirin is a derivative of willow bark. Yes. Something's a derivative of something. We've not used that yet, obviously, thankfully, but we did get it. And another thing we got was called pink eye drops. So we've had a couple of things on our farm this summer with it being, um, the weather's been kind of crazy. It's been really smoky. The fat cow's eyes have not been happy. And uh, Carnation actually poked her eye, uh, I think on some stubble. So we used these drops in her eye and we have some video of that. Here's our head box. This is where, if we're gonna do any type of like treatment or breeding or anything, we do this outside. Give them a couple of pellets so they're happy about it. We don't do anything in the milking parlor because we want that to be a safe place and so they'll let down milk. So today we're gonna put some drops in carnation dye. Good girl, Carnation. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Now you get a treat. And I think they actually work real well. She, uh, it seems to be very soothing to her. She seems to not mind getting them at all. And uh, since we started using them uh, just a day or so ago, we've seen marked improvement. Uh, so um, I'm actually surprised at how well it's working. It, it, they're called pink eye drops, but they're more for just any kind of general eye injury, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm been pretty impressed with how fast uh, things have moved because the eyes in general are very slow to heal anyway. You're supposed to give it only for like a three to five day period. So very good tinctures from Dr. Paul's. And these, each one of these bottles, when we bought a retail at the little place we picked them up at, I think we're about 20 bucks. Um, you can find him online. Uh, you might be able to find a supplier near you if you're looking for these types of things. Is one of the places we buy stuff from. Let's be getting you. Yeah. Doors are banging. Oh, they this, this door. Um, another company that we really like their products is called Crystal Creek and we have some Crystal Creek products. Well first is wound spray. We use a lot of uh, Crystal Creek wound spray um, and then another item I like is called Utter Fancy and it's a, a salve and it's for like chapped teats or, or cut teats and uh, udders. Um, but it, it mostly contains tea tree oil, so it's good anywhere on the skin that you need to, to heal a cut or a sore or something like that. So for our babies, uh, babies, uh, CAF 180, it's an electrolyte uh, solution that you can mix up. It comes in a powder. That uh, This is a good thing if they have any sort of scours or anything to give them a boost. See, this is lice and mange wash, and we use this. Uh, seems like in the spring and fall, sometimes the cows get lice, and actually our calves, uh, Rainy and Dodie, both had uh, some sort of lice or something on their necks, so we used this on them, and uh, it cleared right up. So I've always had good luck with this. And then uh, this is OptiPeak. Uh, this is a high calcium nutritional supplement, so 
This would be for like uh, after calving, uh, you give the cow some of this and it would just give her a little bit of a boost. Uh, like Virginia said, uh, organic cow care is very heavy on preventative and uh, we think that's been successful. So a lot of the stuff, you're like, you talk about preventative care, but a lot of the stuff looks like stuff that you're using to treat something, which is true. Um, the cores of our other preventative care include, you know, free access to kelp, uh, selenium uh, 90 uh, salt, Redmond salt, and obviously great grazing, outdoor access, full social behaviors. Clean dry bedding. Clean dry bedding. Good ventilation in the barn. Good handling of the animals so we're not stressing them out. Uh, they can stay as a herd, the cows are with them. And so that all of that is it's this whole big package. So we do all those foundational things. And then if there's anything that we want to get ahead of to make sure that things gonna develop into something more, we find these things very helpful. So there's a couple other books uh, that we have that aren't specifically organic uh, books on um, healthcare, but this is our oldest, newest book. So it is a very old book, but we just bought it. And it is the Veterinary Guide for Farmers, new and revised edition. And it's from uh, published in 1963 by Popular Mechanics. Um, but some of the stuff that I like in this book that I just go over really quick is uh, there's a chapter in here on how to tell what's wrong and it really goes into the behavior and, and how animals act um, because cows are really good at hiding that they're hurting um, because they're prey animals. They don't want to portray that they're injured or hurt so they're really good at hiding it. So there's a really good chapter in here on how to tell what's wrong and then they also have these diagnosis charts uh, showing symptoms. And so this is a really good book. And then another one, and this is a conventional uh, book, is a veterinary book for dairy farmers. But it is very detailed and lots of excellent pictures. I need to find some that aren't too graphic. Lots of good drawings. How about some drawings? Those aren't too bad. YouTube won't take the video down for that. And uh, so it's very detailed. Again, it's a conventional book, but it's really handy when you're trying to diagnose something because then you can then take what you learn in here and transfer it to the organic system and see what best course of treatment you might have. So and these are another couple of uh, tools in our toolbox. And in closing, another thing in our toolbox obviously are our mentors. We call them all the time. All the time. I would say at least once a month, you know. We always want to call them to just say hi, but normally we're like, so this happened with, you know, Rose, what do you think? And so we definitely use our mentors. And another layer of things that we use is our vet. I think everybody should have a good relationship with their vet. Some people would be like, oh, why well, don't we spend all that money? Again, it's from the prevention side. If you have a vet that you form a relationship with and they come out and do like a little herd check, charge like a basic farm visit, then when you call at 2 o'clock in the morning because something's bad wrong with your cow or something, it's not a, well, who are you? Where are you located? I mean, the vet's already been here. They probably know which cow you're talking about if you have a small herd. And it, it's very nice to know that you have like another layer of protection. You have all the stuff you're trying to do on your home farm. You have your books and your mentors. And then you have the veterinary care. It's like a layer. Why not have all the help that you can have to have the healthiest farm? And even though we're organic, we've had the vet out here to do uh, stuff to our cows because they hurt themselves sometimes. And so uh, we, we need that. Some stuff is just outside of our wheelhouse and we need an expert. So. so on a side note, before our camera battery dies, you know, our cow Daisy, and I have a photo of this, this summer cut her eyelid somehow. We don't know where or when or how, but we had the vet come out and we had to do, she had to do stitches. Um, and then I had uh, the calves were made into steers and we also did, they did uh, dehorning. And we used uh, banamine, which is a pain reliever, allowed in organic production and lidocaine to, for pain management. In closing, I just want to say that for us, it's very important to take care of our animals because Obviously, if we didn't have our dairy cows, we wouldn't be a dairy farm. And they are our livelihood, and happy cows make lots of milk. 
And so they are the hardest working members of the team, so we got to do our part to uh, take care of them. Uh, if you haven't, please do subscribe to our videos. We really appreciate it. Uh, believe it or not, all the views that we get on our videos, only about 20% are subscribers. So if you like watching our videos and you do so regularly and you're not subscribed, please do. Uh, we appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Tom Morosa.